Genesis chapter number five. I'll make it easy on you. That's the first book in the Bible. How's that? Amen. Don't have to look too far. Genesis chapter number five. I started the series a couple of weeks ago uh, on walking with God, and I believe. This is an important series in the day in which we live. Uh, boy, I'll tell you, I don't, I don't like this world and uh, I don't like what's going on out here, but folks, oh, you just need to walk with God. Amen. You walk with God, it's going to be all right. You know, God knew what was coming down the pipes. God knew it before He ever made this earth. God already knew Jesus Christ was as a lamb slain from the foundation of the world. He already knew sin would take place. He knew what it would escalate to. Get chapter number five again. Chapter four and five are books of genealogy. Chapter number four, you have the genealogy of the ungodly line of Cain. When you get to the last part, last couple of verses of chapter number four, it introduces the reestablishment. I say reestablishment because Cain and Abel. Uh, Abel was killed and Cain was reprobate, so God had to skip over these. And God gave him another son by the name of Seth. Seth was a continuation of what's called the Messianic or the godly line. You get down through, we find a lot of things going on. I'll deal with them in a few moments. But notice in verse number 29, chapter 5, or uh, 28, let me back up one, in Lamech, lived in 180 and two years and begat a son. And he called his name Noah, saying, This same shall comfort us concerning our work and toil of our hands. The word Noah means rest. Because of the ground which the Lord hath cursed. And Lamech lived after he begat Noah 590 and five years and begat sons and daughters. All the days of Lamech were 770 and seven years, and he died. Verse 32, And Noah was 500 years old, and Noah begat Shem, Ham, and Japheth. You get to chapter number 6, the word and, we find that now since the birth of Noah, 480 years have actually passed at that particular time. But in that time, right around there, Noah begat three sons. And the Bible said when he was 500 years old, he begat three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth. And daughters were born unto them that the sons of God. This is the Messianic line. Now, the angel theory is just simply a biblical, unbiblical theory. This is the Messianic line that he's dealt with in chapter number 5. This Messianic line, the sons of God, saw the daughters of men. That was the, the ungodly line of Cain that was found in chapter number 4. When they saw these daughters of men, that they were fair, they took them wives of all which they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man. There's no mention of angels found anywhere in here. But he's having a problem with mankind itself. For that he also is flesh, yet his days shall be in 120 years. Verse 4, there were giants in the earth in those days. And also after that, when the sons of God came into the daughters of men, these giants were not the sons of this uh, ungodly relationship that took place, they were beforehand. The Bible's clear about that, that there were uh, giants in the land before that. But they bear them children to the same. Look at verse number four. Became mighty men, which were of old men of renown. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and creeping thing, 
the fowls of the air, for it repenteth me that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations. And notice the last phrase, and Noah walked with God. The actual phrase, walked with God, is only found three times in your Bible. Twice in chapter number 5 when it dealt with a man by the name of Enoch, and once in chapter number 6 when it deals with a man by the name of Noah. Now we found that Adam walked with the voice of God in the garden. Not a physical presence, but actually with the voice of God. God just simply spoke to him and talked to him in that garden, and he heard the voice of the Lord walking in the garden in the cool of that morning. We find Enoch walked with God in consistency. He walked for 300 years. That's a long time to walk with God. Now, we think if we've walked with God for 50 years, we've done well, and you have because of longevity is gone. But at the same time, Enoch walked consistently with God for 300 years. He begat a son at age number 65 whose name was Methuselah. Methuselah was a prophecy of the impending judgment of God. Methuselah means the man of the dart. It means a missile or an outshoot. It means it shall be sent. All right? What God said was, was basically the year that Methuselah would die would be the year that the judgment of God would fall on this earth. If you count the years, I've counted them. As we looked here, it's now 2764 B.C. It's 1,236 years after the creation. That's very easily calculated because Adam lived 930 years, but when he was 130 years old, he began a son by the name of Seth. So he was 130. When did, it, when did Adam's life begin? It began when God breathed into his nostrils the breath of life in Genesis chapter number 1 and 2, along at, I think it's chapter number 2. So then it gives the birth dates of all these children down through this time. And if you calculate, he died the year of the flood. He did not die in the flood, but Methuselah was prophetic of something that was going to happen to the people on earth because of their disobedience. But we find that Noah was a man who walked with God. We find that society, both the genealogy of Cain and the genealogy of Seth, has trended downhill to this particular time. In 1300, uh, 1,236 years, they went from the absolute glory and innocence of the garden down to a totally reprobate society at this time. So as we look at them, we find now the godly line is marrying with the, uh, in the ungodly line. And what happens is when you start crossing these lines of biblical distinction, I believe our young people need to marry people that love the Lord. If you don't do that, what's going to happen is it's going to cause a twofold problem in your marriage. One, you're either going to have to go with them or they'll have to go with you. But sometimes they won't go with you. So you end up with a spiritually di spiritual division in the home. So what happened was, over a period of time, you couldn't tell one from the other. Boy, is that not prophetic of the days in which we live? Uh, where it's hard to tell one from the other. I mean the way people live or fail to live or whatever in our day. The Bible tells us that the same characteristics found in Noah's days is going to be found in ours. Listen to what he said in Matthew. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be, and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. Oh, what, what, what a, a, a statement about the days in which we live. You know, people are no longer looking 
for the Lord Jesus Christ to come again. Matter of fact, most of the world is not looking for Him, period. Uh, we just live in that day. Noah lived in days of unimaginable wickedness of the mind. Over in verse number 5, it said, And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. We live in days of messed up minds. People's minds are wrong. To walk into a, a, a mall down in Texas and just pick out strangers you've never seen and shoot them dead. and I mean, just, just animals, the way they act. We're talking about their minds. Their minds have been destroyed today through these secular education of the public school systems as they have turned these children away from God and into socialistic humanism. We find the imagination, the wickedness of mind, total lack of fear of God. Over in Hebrews, it said, By faith Noah, being warned of God, not seen as yet, moved with fear, preparing an ark to the saving of his household, by the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. People in our day and in this day had no fear of God. They had certainly heard about God. The Messianic line was still intact, even though it had degenerated. I wonder sometimes uh, how far Methuselah walked with God. The Bible does not really say that. It just gives his name and the time frame of his death, which was prophetic of the flood. But all the time that the ark was preparing, we find that Noah knew Methuselah. Everybody knew Methuselah. That man of the dark, that missile man, that man, it shall be sent. Uh, talking about the flood itself. They had no fear of God. They were disobedient to the Word of God. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse number 20, which sometimes were disobedient when once the long-suffering of God waited in the days of Noah while the ark was a preparing wherein few, that is, eight souls were saved by water. Disobedient to the Word of God doomed to the judgment of God. Second Peter chapter 2, and spared not the old world, but saved Noah the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly, and then blinded to the times in which they live. You know, people are looking for a solution to their problem today, but what they're doing, they're treating symptoms. I've often said a lot of times medical personnel treat symptoms instead of finding causes. The way you destroy the symptoms is you find the cause and fix the cause. If you fix the cause, the symptoms will at that point go away. This morning, the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them that believe not. Hey, they're blinded to where they are. Now, when God spoke to Moses, look in verse number 13. And God said unto Moses... These are the generations of no Moses was before that, if you will notice. In verse number 9, these are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man, perfect in his generations. Noah walked with God. He didn't do that just after God spoke to him. That was a way of life with Noah. Now, as far as I can understand, Noah probably had been walking with God for hundreds of years. And I thank the Lord for that. But he walked with God before God ever spoke to him. Now, what I want to preach on this morning is Noah walked with God in loneliness. In solitude. He walked with God by himself. You know, eight people got on that ark, but I don't see anything spiritual about his wife, his daughter, his sons, or their wives. The ark is not a type of salvation. If it was, then Noah built his own salvation. It's a type of safety through obedience. When you get to Enoch, let me give you a little biblical history. He's a type of the church that will be taken out before judgment comes. He's a type of the rapture of the church. But Noah is a beautiful type of Israel as they will walk in the, in, in the ark of God's safety through a tribulation period and come out right on the other side. So we find here that 
God sent a flood, but Noah walked with God. I believe, I believe he was a real lonely person. Now, this is not a martyr syndrome this morning, but I don't find a lot of people I know in my neighborhood, I don't know about your neighborhood, I don't find anybody that I know of in that whole neighborhood that is simply living for God. They may go to church occasionally. Most of the time, every time we leave, their car's in the driveway. When we get back, she's still parked. They have church affiliation, but they have no relationship with the Savior. They have no relationship with God. So what happens is, Barbara and I don't have a whole lot of visitors. Now, sometime, at times they've come down our driveway, and I've told you before, when they wanted us to pray for them, they came down to the house, sat on the couch, gave us their prayer request, and we prayed for them. I've witnessed to our neighbors. I've invited them to church. I've witnessed to them, but they don't necessarily run with us. You understand what I'm saying? I'm talking about walking with God in solitude. Sometimes we sing that little children's song, and I think it's more than a children's song. I have decided to follow Jesus. Though none go with me, still I will follow. I often ask the question, if nobody goes with me, will I follow God? What if you were like the old Maytag repairman on a commercial years ago, Oh, that was supposedly because of how good Maytag washers were, said he was the loneliest man in the world. I believe that Noah walked with God in loneliness. Now, I'm not saying that he felt lonely because God walked with him. He walked with God. Listen, God and you make a, uh, a, a, a majority anywhere you go. I want you to understand, if God goes with, you know, we sing that song, if God goes with me, I'll go anywhere, anywhere. Hey, He'll go with you. But we find a man that walked in loneliness. He walked a life that was contrary to what was going on. Now, I'm going to give you three reasons out of verse 9. We're not going to be a long time. What made Noah what he was? What was the difference between him and even the continuation of the Messianic line you find in chapter number 5? What was different about Noah? The first thing it said was that Noah was a just man. I said the ark is not a type of salvation. Noah was saved before God ever said anything to him, verse 13. That word just, it means to be made righteous means to be right with God. He walked in loneliness, loneliness because of justification. Salvation made a difference in this man's life to the point that they wanted nothing to do with him. You know, the Bible calls him a preacher of righteousness. He preached right living. I think our pulpits need to get back. Hey, thank God for exhortational preaching. We need to be exhorted, folks. But the Bible said, preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, and exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. I believe we need to get back to preaching righteousness out of these pulpits. Preaching against the sin that has permeated the land in which we live. Listen, it's one thing to preach about somebody that's not here or whatever. But I'm talking about preaching to God's people this morning. He was a righteous man. His salvation affected his life to the point that he walked with God. It's a tremendous statement made about him. You know, the Bible said over in Matthew, no man can serve two masters. Will he the hold of one, despise the other? Now, I understand in the context he's talking about mammon or the, uh, the riches of unrighteousness. I understand that. But listen, you can't hold on to God and hold on to the world at the same time. These two are contrary one to the other. You've got to turn loose of something. Somewhere we've got to turn loose. Noah wouldn't turn loose. God saved him. I don't know when he saved him. I know that Noah believed God. Noah was a man that came to God. 
You know, we, we need a salvation this morning that will change our loving. The things we love. You know, the Bible said over in 1 John chapter 2, love not the what? Things of the world. We're not to love the things of the world. Not that I don't love the world. Thank God for nature. Boy, I could sit out on my deck all day and just watch the birds and the squirrels and the deer and have a ball sitting out there. Hey, God made us a beautiful place to live in. But we can't live on the deck. We can't do that. We've got to intermingle. You've got to work. You've got to go. You've got to do. You've got to be around. And everywhere that we get around, we find people that evidently do not love Jesus Christ. They may name the name of Christ. But they don't love Him. Because if you love God, it'll change your longing on the inside. It'll change your desires. It will change your future. It will change your life. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. That's in a present tense. Old things are passed away. That's in a present tense. Behold, all things are become new. These are present tenses that we find in a verse. Something takes place when you get saved. God may makes you a new creature, but you can walk contrary to it. If you love right, I'm talking about loving right. I'm talking about loving the Word of God this morning. Boy, that is missing. All I hear is ta attacks on the Word of God. Listen, we've got the Word of God in our hand, and I'll never apologize for this. That's not Ruckmanism. That's just simply, I believe God said it. I believe that it's right. I believe it's the Word of God. I think if there's something that's contrary to this, it's got to be wrong because both of them cannot be right. So we find where, hey, the love of God this morning. Hey, people just leave their Bibles a set and they don't ever pick them up and read them anymore. Hey, it'll change the way you look at things. It'll change the way you behave. This man had a love in his heart that put a longing for the things of God that affected his life. Isn't that a blessing? I often said, and I'll say again, one word we don't hear anymore, nobody ever says he or she was a godly person. When's the last time you've heard anybody called godly? Now I want you to think about that. At funerals, oh, they were saved. Well, thank God for saved. Were they godly? I've often said, by the time they park you down here, friend, your life is preached your funeral. I've heard people literally laugh when a preacher tried to put somebody in heaven that lived like the devil all their life. Now, I don't know if they're saved or lost. Thank God, that's up to God. But their life had already preached their funeral. I was at a funeral with old brother Alvin one day, and he turned around and looked at me and laughed. We laugh. We've sat back in the back at a funeral because all the family up here looked at each other and laughed out loud when that preacher said, we'll see this individual in heaven again one day. The whole family laughed. It was a mockery. It was nothing but a joke. I'm talking about walking with God. He was a lonely man because of his justification. He loved the Word of God. He loved the people of God. He loved the house of God. He loved the things of God. Listen, we ought to love the things of God. We cannot walk with God without loving what God loves. God loves His people. He loves the church. He loves the Word of God. Hey, He loves. God is love. In order for us to walk with God, we've got to walk in loving the right things, love not the world. The second reason was He was a man of separation. Look in verse 9, and perfect in his generations. What's he talking about? He's talking about in chapter number 6 that you've got the intermingling of the seeds. You've got the godly seed and the ungodly seed that are now marrying each other and they're intermingling in here. But the Bible said that he was perfect in his generations. It meant that he married right. I don't, there's no, nothing said about his wife other than his wife got on the ark when he built the ark. Nothing that, hey, I don't find anything else ever said about Noah's wife. 
Even when they got off the ark, nothing at all. That's not demeaning her one bit in the world. He married right. Separation from what was going on. Another thing we miss today is separation from what's going on out here. That don't mean you've got to be a do-gooder 24 hours a day. That's not what it's talking about, folks. It's talking about not touching the unclean thing. I'm glad the Bud Light people got kicked for what they did. But I hate it that anybody drinks beer of any type. I believe the Bible says that we are to abstain. I've had people didn't like it. I, I, it doesn't really matter to me. Listen, God said that wine is a mocker and strong drink is raging and whoso is deceived thereby is not wise. The Bible said you can't even look at the wine when it giveth its color in the cup and moveth itself aright. That moveth itself aright is called fermentation. We used to say that the wine is working. It's that fermentation product. Hey, I'm talking about leaving the things of the world alone. He was separated from the things of the world. He walked right in front of these people. Listen, they knew who Noah was. His name meant rest. Now he is 500 or 480 years old. 500 when he had his two sons. He was 600 when the flood came. But we find a man that was lonely in his separation. You know, the Bible said, Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers, for what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? What communion hath light with darkness? What concord hath Christ with Belial? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? Hmm? I'm talking about separation. Noah was not politically correct. We hear that term today. Listen, are you politically correct? I am politically incorrect. Just that's who I am. I call sodomy sodomy. I don't call it trans, LBGTB. You know, they're starting to get a list of 80 different types of whatever out here. Let me tell you something. God made Adam in the day that He made him both male and female. That means that His seed would bring forth the sex of the child. He had an X and a Y chromosome. You're either male or you're female. You can't change that. Hey, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just saying not politically correct. I don't like to use vulgarity, so I try to stay away from some of the terms that were used back when I was raised up. But let me tell you something. The worst thing you can say is the word sodomy. Sodomites. Hey, not politically correct. I'm not politically correct with what they're doing uh, any, any place at all. I believe we need to use Bible terminology and we need to stand against these things. I'm talking about separation. Noah was not tainted with the wickedness of the day. His life was contrary to theirs. They were walking one path. Noah was 180 degrees the other direction. He was in the opposite direction walking with God. Noah was not unequally yoked with the worldly or the unsaved. He loved the sinner, not to sin. Now, third thing, I want you to notice his justification. Then we've got his separation, but we find his affiliation. His affiliation. And Noah walked with God. Again, I, I want to look at those two words, with God. God did not walk with Noah. If God walked with Noah, then Noah would have set where they went, the destination and the speed and the direction and everything else. Sometimes I go walking with someone. If I choose to go walking with them, they set the direction, they set the destination, they set the speed. I am walking with them. God did not walk with Noah. Noah walked with God. His affiliation. You know, today they want to find out what your affiliation is. Spiritually, what's your affiliation? What's your denomination? I tell them I am a thank God biblicist. Thank God for fundamental Bible-believing independent Baptist. I am one of them. But friend, let me tell you something. That Bible's what's right, not me. I've seen independent Baptist churches that weren't right with the Bible. They didn't care anything about what the Bible said. They were walking off of their traditions 
And listen, we ought to hold fast the traditions of our fathers as long as those traditions agree with the Word of God. When they disagree with the Word of God, we don't walk in that tradition. We also do not teach traditions as the Word of God. There are things that are done in a biblical manner, but you can't find them verbatim in the Word of God. His affiliation. He didn't affiliate with the crowd. Didn't affiliate with them. Boy, what a blessing. Talking to a man that wouldn't hold hands with the word, uh, world and at the same time despise the God that he loved. He couldn't hold hands with them, honey. And by the way, who you hold hands with is who you are. Had a man tried to scold me not long ago. I was getting a haircut. And he talked about another denomination. He said, our preachers just as fundamental as you fundamental Baptists are. And I told him, that's because you don't even know the definition of fundamentalism. I told him, you don't even know what fundamental is, my friend. There wasn't anybody in there but him, me, and the chair, and the barber behind me. And I was watching where he put the razor. But the only reason I did that in front of this barber, he started in on me. He knows who I am. I know who he is. And we're in disagreement on the Bible. We're in disagreement on doctrine. We're in disagreement on separation and everything else. And I wasn't picking on him. He fired the first shot across the bow and I blew his ship out of the water in front of the barber. And I make no apologies. There's a time to be quiet. Then there's a time when you open your big mouth and just tell it the way it is. Say, I'm talking about a man that his affiliation can two walk together except they be agreed. We cannot walk together if we cannot agree. I'm not always right, but I want to tell you, you've got to agree. You understand? I don't, I, I don't shade that out one way. Noah could not walk with this world and walk with God as they were contrary one to the other. I'm talking about one of the greatest men in the Bible was a man by the name of Noah. Oh, Joshua, I think, summed it up, and I'm about done. He said, If it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, I believe we need to make up our minds about us and our houses. Our house is going to serve God and walk with God or it's going to serve mammon and walk with the world. It's going to go one or the other. Again, I say there is no benign state of neutrality with God. You're either for Him or against Him. You're with Him or you're not with Him. He said, but as far as me and my house, he said, we will serve the Lord. Noah walked with God for hundreds of years. As a matter of salvation, separation and choice, he walked with God. I thank God for these biblical examples. Listen, I'm not trying to be hard this morning. We live in a wicked, wicked world and you need to make sure of which side you're on. I don't make enemies here in town. I think I'm very well respected in this town. I love people. I don't intentionally start fights with people. I don't do that. But at the same time, this town knows that we are different. You're marked this morning because your car is in the parking lot. They know that we're different from what's going on out here. Thank God. Listen, walk with God in the ark of safety, one for yourself, but also for your children and your family. He prepared an ark to the saving of his household. Amen. Let's stand this morning. We're going to have an invitation. If you need to come this morning, you come. Noah walked with God. But he walked in loneliness. Noah was not a very popular man in the day in which he lived.